refusing to be God. Father, we just thank you and praise you. Thank you for allowing us to make it to this point in the day. Thank you that uh, your name, your 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 plan has our name uh, with many, many more days, weeks, months, years, and even decades uh, slated for us to be servants for your kingdom here on this earth. Father, we ask that you would just um, think through our minds, speak through our mouths, have to pass through our, our, our hearts, that you would use us to convey any and everything that you decide to convey tonight. I ask that all of our minds are clear, that there are no distractions, so that we can hone in and hunker down um, on your word, Father, so that we can hear something. Father, I pray that our ears are open, so that we are listening, so that we are attentive to what you decide to uh, reveal to us in this session and in this setting. God, I thank you that you continue to heal our apostle, that you continue to make deposits in him um, and give him instructions so that he can lead us according to your plan to live and pray. In Jesus' name, Father, we appreciate you. We praise you. We know that you know every circumstance and every situation that is represented by everybody in uh, attendance this evening. And I thank you that your word, thank you that your word um, has our answer, the answer that we are looking for. And I thank you that our faith is strong and being strengthened as a result of our submission to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so like I mentioned, our topic, our title is Forceful Entry, Refusing to be Denied, right? And I got the opportunity to uh, to, to start this conversation with a few brothers last week, my brother Dana, and uh, and those that y'all may know him as Young Sheed. He is our, uh, one of our, I can't say our, it's a bunch of them. He's one of our spoken word extraordinaire artists. Um, and we got the opportunity to dialogue around this topic, right? So I'll revisit a little bit of that conversation and then we'll progress in the conversation with Benzie and with Lati, and we'll see what they have to deposit and add to that conversation. And again, I'm, I'm, um, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, forceful, right? how I always do. I like to break things down and define it. So I define each and every word and I, and I came up with a working definition, right? When I looked up the word forceful, the word force, forceful meant possessing or filled with strength or energy exerted. Possessing or filled with strength or energy exerted. It meant possessing moral or mental strength, moral and mental strength. It also meant for, uh, forceful also meant filled with the capacity to persuade or convince. Entry meant the right or privilege to go or come in, the right or privilege to come in or take possession. Refuse to be denied. Refuse means to express oneself as unwilling to accept, to show and express one's unwillingness to do or comply with, to not allow someone to have or do something. Deny means to declare something to be untrue, to refuse to admit or acknowledge something, to refuse to grant, to refuse to accept the existence, the truth, or the validity of. And so when I put all these things together, my work and definition was due to our connection to Christ, through our mental and moral capacity, we have the right and the privilege to gain admission and or take possession of something, and we impose our willingness to accept, admit, acknowledge, and comply with anything contrary or in opposition to the truth of God's word. And I know that's a mouthful, but what that essentially means is God's word is final and that's it. We're not going to go back and forth with what uh, the enemy tries to, to conjure in our ear. And as I was going back over this topic, I was like, okay, God, I don't want to just regurgitate everything in the conversation last week. And, and, I, and I was sitting in silence for a couple days, right? And I'm going to be honest, it started to make me a little bit nervous um, because when you're expecting the Lord to speak, right, and you're wanting him to speak so you can, at least with me, when I, when I study, I know when it kicks in and I know when I'm trying and I know when he's giving me something, right? And I kept feeling like I'm trying. So I just was like, okay, God, I'm going to take my hands off of it until you start to speak. And the first thing I heard was um, I started thinking about different i said let me let me do something different let's uh let's use someone in the scriptures different than you know everybody that we would use the davids the pauls i started looking at, i start looking at deborah's story i started looking at uh esther's story i started looking at jonah i started looking at all these different stories and i'm thinking about all these historically documented events in scripture and, and all of the men and women of 
of, of the kingdom of God who refused to be denied and, and they entered into the promise that God had for them forcefully. And I believe the Holy Spirit spoke and said, what about me? And I had to scratch my head because I'm like, <laughs> wait, did I just think about everybody but God about this? Right, and, right. hey, God? And, and, and he started to just, it was almost like a flashing before my eyes, right? Just going from Genesis to Revelation, going from Adam's fall, and, and God continuing to still work his plan out despite our failures, right? All the, the trials and the tribulations for the nation of Israel, them going into captivity and then him delivering them and then them getting themselves back in trouble and him delivering them again, and just working out. And I was like, God, you know what? Like you, you really are the one who really refuses to be denied. Like you're not gonna let your plan be thwarted or stopped by what we call an enemy. And I, I kept thinking about that. And then he sent me to Genesis 126. And I said, God, I didn't read that scripture a thousand times, right? And he said, go read it again. And that scripture says, Genesis 126 in the, in the KJV, it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And I said, wow, if you are the framework of refusing to be denied, that's the 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 the, the the plan, that's the, the motto that we're supposed to be following, right? And it says, um, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And I'm like, God, so you instructed us to have dominion over everything, right? And I just start thinking about it. And I start thinking about refusing to be denied, right? Refusing to be denied means that denial will come and present itself. Mm -hmm. Um, refusing to be denied may not look how we think it should look, right? And I start, I start thinking about, um, I start thinking about the the suffering that Jesus endured, right? So when we, oftentimes, or at least me, when I think about refusing to be denied, it's like uh, it's something kind of soft, right? They close the door on you, and then you go on about, you try to figure it out. And I thought about Jesus' refusal to be denied, walked him to his death. And I was just like, man, God, like, how? How do we walk after that blueprint? Like, show us how to walk after that blueprint, right? And being a uh, forceful entry means that something is in the way of where I currently am and where I aspire to be, right? Something is in the way. Um, and I just, I, I chewed on that. But, you know, enough of me. Like, what, what are you guys? I know you guys have a bunch of input um, in this conversation because I know y'all are, are y'all in the word and y'all constantly are spending time with the Father. But what do y'all have to, to say about being uh, refusing to be denied? I just want to piggyback. Oh, go ahead, Latif. Go ahead. Um, it no, just when you were saying when you were talking about things being in the way, and you're still refusing to be denied, even though there is opposition, and a number of people came to mind. But one is the woman with the issue of blood, and that's in Mark five twenty five through thirty four. And uh, it talks about how she had a issue of blood for 12 years. Now, first of all, for 12 years, that's a long time. People would, yeah. some people would have quit already. But I find it interesting that her issue was 12 years. Jairus's daughter was 12 years old, but that's a whole nother story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but she refused to be denied. Despite the opposition, there were people walking. She was in a state. And during that time, if you had certain health challenges, you couldn't be amongst the people. So she mm -hmm. risked being amongst the people. And she was like, I just got to get to his hem, the hem of his garment. I don't have to stand up. I don't have to, he doesn't have to see me. I don't have to be boisterous about it. But her refusal to be denied caused her to not give up in those 12 years. And then mm -hmm. also to push past the opposition, the opposition of people's feet the opposition of people's legs, the opposition of the possibility of being stoned for disobeying the laws and the rules. So she pushed past it. And I'm sure people kicked her. I'm sure people yeah. tried to step on her. I'm sure people were like, Ugh, get away from me. But that opposition, she, she pushed past it. She pushed past to get her breakthrough. She pushed past the pain of what she's dealing with, the embarrassment, the societal disapproval which a lot of times we deal with and she pushed yep. past it. We don't know how weak she was, but she kept crawling. Yeah. We don't know if she fell. We don't know if she 
had to catch her breath. We don't know. As people, they said the masses thronged him, basically meaning there's a lot of people around him. Think mm -hmm. about if y'all went to a concert and you had to go from the the back of the, the stadium. The nosebleeds. Right, <laughs> right, the yeah. nosebleed seats. And you had to crawl through all them people jumping around, dancing, doing whatever they're doing to get to the front and touch somebody's bottom of their clothes. Mm-hmm. And it shows you that she was crawling because she said, I just need the, the hem, the hem. The hem is at the bottom. She was like, I don't have to get the top. I don't have to have him lay hands on me. But her virtue, her persistence drew anointing from Jesus. And he was like, who touched me? Right. And they're like, for real? Like all these people around you and you're asking who touched you? And he was right. like, no. he felt that persistence. He felt that refusal to be denied. And because of it, she got her breakthrough. So he felt that power of breakthrough leaving him because she refused. Go ahead, Benzie. I'm sorry. No, that's great. That's great. <laughs> I think, I think any time we are going after something that God has promised, it's a fight, right? There's always opposition that happens. Absolutely. As soon as as soon as you get that prophetic word, there's opposition that comes up, whether it's physical opposition, mental opposition. Whether it, if you're trying to get healing, there's opposition that comes up. You're trying to get deliverance. Every single thing that you want from God, there is a an opposing force, right? That okay. says, nope, I'm going to block this thing from you. Because if, right. if, if I can block it from you, then I can have your testimony be silenced and other people can't get delivered, right? So forceful entry, that's why I love when you were talking about, Denny, you don't have to for I don't have to forcefully enter into my room door at my house. There's nothing stopping me from doing that. But when there's mm -hmm. a blockage, I have to be forceful. If someone's standing up against that door, I got to be forceful and push my way through it. So I love this topic of forceful entry because everything that we desire, everything that God has for us, is going to take some uh, some force. It's going to take some some fight. It's going to take some uh, uh, um, some some like that the lady with the issue of blood. Some crawling through tight places, some 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 fighting through opposition, not listening to certain people, blocking people out, saying, uh-uh, I know what God has for me. I'm going to go get it. And um, mm -hmm. I kind of told told you guys earlier, I was, when I when I um, got this topic, I thought immediately about the walls of Jericho, right? And, and I'm going to read it in the scripture. I kind of just, you guys all know about the walls of Jericho. This is the promised land, flowing of milk and honey. And God had gave it to his people, the Lord had gave it to his people. Uh, but he sent out some scout, some scouts. Moses sent out some scouts to go look at the land um, to see what it was like. And the scouts came back and they were like, oh, it's exactly what God said it was going to be. It, it's, it's beautiful. It's going to be flowing milk and honey. It's a great land. It's perfect for us. But, mm -hmm. but there are giants there. They, we look like grasshoppers to them. That's what they said. We look like grasshoppers to them. And they mm -hmm. so, so fear crept in. Fear was the blockage at that point, right? But the person I love in that story is Caleb. Caleb goes, it don't matter. Let's get him right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Caleb was hype. But I think as believers, that's where we got to be. You know that mm -hmm. fearless that fearless kid that's like, I, I'll take all y'all right. right now. Right. 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 We got to be that fearless kid that don't, I don't care. I got God on my side. I know what God has called me to be. I know the power that I possess. And I know that this is what God has promised. So if I have these things, if I have a promise from God, I know who I am and I know that God has my back on this. There's no opposition I can stand mm -hmm. up against what God already has for me. And that's the place as believers we got to get to. And we, we let our, our financial situation be a place that blocks us. We let our education, we let time, time management, organization be things that block us. We look at our circumstances and say, I can't do this. I don't have time for this. I, Denny, I love what you did. You went back to school to, to, to accomplish something, to get your master's degree, right? Mm -hmm. Your master's degree. Yep. So, someone in your position could have said, nah, I'm, I'm in my 30s. I got kids. I got work. I got responsibility. This is too much. But no, right. God has a calling on your life to young people and he's right. using you. So in order to do that, there was a certain level of education you had to accomplish. Sorry, Danny, yeah. for using you as my case study. But no, 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 that worked. That worked. Right? I mean... so, so anybody could have said to you, ah, oh, Denny, you, 
You're too yep. old to be going. What you doing going back to school, Denny? Mm-hmm. Nah, man, mm-hmm. just keep doing what you're doing. Keep driving them, you know, on the set, movie sets and all that stuff that you were doing before. But then he was like, no, I'm taking what God gave me. You know, that's what was it, Mary Mary? Go get it, go get it, go get your blessing. <laughs> go, go get, get your it. Blessing. Stop right. letting things hold us back as believers. I think there's so many places that secular people have occupied that believers should have occupied, but we've held ourselves Absolutely. back. There is play. I think the role of presidency is for a believer. It's for mm-hmm. a believer. But yeah. so many believers have not stepped up in the role of politics to say we need to take this position back. Right. It's good. We mm-hmm. need to take this back. We need the, the, the United States to be learning from the church and not the church trying to learn from the United States. We right. have to step into this position, but we have to do it by force. Right. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm done. No, that, that was that was good, right? <laughs> so I, 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 it was a bunch of stuff like you just you just unleashed in that, right? So mm-hmm. first, um, when you brought up Caleb and the the report from the spies, right? I was looking at that last week, and 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 the Bible says that that they said, right, we are grasshoppers in their, their, their eyes. eyes, right. What the, what the giants was thinking about them right right we just right. automatically right. shortchanged ourselves by we ourselves. oh we we i can't do it i'm too old right i'm too this i'm from the like when i think about there's not a lot of people from my community that have master's degrees right so i could have settled for that and just mm-hmm. been like it is what it is ain't nobody from over here got master's degrees I was just looking at one of my, my homeboys from my neighborhood his son just got a full ride to Oregon they just went up to uh to Oregon to do the visit and sign his letter of intent and I'm like man like how dope is that like what what kind of um what kind of encouragement is that to see somebody that you grew up with now got a full scholarship full ride to play football and to go to Oregon right and I could have settled for well just you know it is what it is I'm, I'm gonna just do this and try to figure things out but I was like no I want to go back to school. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care how old I am. I, I'll figure out how to manage my time to get the stuff done. Mm-hmm. And I stop allowing the, the enemy to implant these thoughts where because he knows that he can't stop anything in our lives. He knows that he has to get us to buy into his scheme. Right. And that's what he got them spies to buy into. But God was like, hold on, Joshua and Caleb, <laughs> y'all don't, uh-uh. don't pay attention right. to nothing going over there. Because them dudes right. said, man. It's, it's everything God said, but we are this. None right. of them giants said, man, them, them little dudes is grasshoppers in our sight. Mm-mm. They don't I know how the other giants looked at them. Right. Yeah. Then I was thinking about how um how how just like when we refuse to be denied, like we have to be able and willing to go to the end of the earth with this promise that God has given us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We gotta be able to exalt uh exhaust not exhaust exhaust uh all of our options right right because usually what happens is instead of like god gives us a a vision he gives us an instruction and instead of having that conversation with him about that instruction we take off right we get so gung-ho that we didn't got this god didn't talk to me and then we go and then we we hit our head um on on 90 walls right we go bang our head and then we get discouraged some of us won't even make it to the 90 walls right and we got to get to the we got to get to the point where we will go through the 99 right because that hundredth one might be the breakthrough that we were looking for right it's like that meme on social media you got to do with the uh you got to do with the little axe and he's mm-hmm. chipping away at the dirt and he got one little like a little like one more whack with the with the axe and the and the and the, the diamond is on the, the other side yeah he gives up and he turns around and he goes because he doesn't know how close he is to it and i think as believers like benzy when you mentioned the political sector right um i told i i I spoke about it last week and i said you know i don't agree with this lifestyle but but what i do is i um i understand what i believe god showing me the blueprint to how we're supposed to be as believers in the lgbt community like they are relentless in pushing their agenda right Uh um and i shared last week how i read a story uh a week before that where there's a community i think in 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 north hollywood or west hollywood somewhere there's a community out there where uh mostly lgbt folks and and they felt that the u-turn sign no u-turn just i saw that i saw that they said that that's that's uh disrespectful to 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 them 
And so they went all the way to the ranks to get the, the, the political arena involved to where the politicians have the city pull all of those signs sure out of that community. Sure I did. said, what in the world is going on? Yes, but I'm that's not what that's supposed to be as believers. Man, yeah, that's not what supposed to be. That relentless, like, yeah. what, like, hold on. Yeah. You said no. Yeah. Okay, somebody in here has right. a yes. Somebody gonna say yes, right? Let me go find who got right. to put the yes in their mouth, and right. let me go talk right. to them. Instead yeah. of what we do is we go, we knock on the door, and they open that door, and we and they close the door in our face, and we get discouraged. Right. And what I try to stop doing is I don't get discouraged that much anymore. Let me not lie and say I don't get discouraged. I got it all together. <laughs> oh, I still, I still go through my, but. But what I what I start how I start looking at it, um, I start looking at it, and I got you know one of my brothers is building his business and doing things, and and you know he takes his meetings and he does he does what he needs to do, and and people will say no to him, and I say that just ain't the person that God, right, right. That's it. It's that's, as simple yeah. as that. That's that's not the person God is using. Next right. person, we got to go through a thousand people. Once you get to that thousand person. The right. 999 right. that said no ain't gonna matter once you get to that thousand, and that thousand is yes. All that everything that you've been through ain't gonna matter. And everything that you that we are all going through is just it's the journey that we have to learn to appreciate, right? Learn to, that's where the character development kicks in. That's where yes. that intimate time with God kicks in. Yes. That's when you normally would get frustrated because you knock on the door and they tell you no, but you turn around and you rejoice. Okay, God, thank you. Thank you. Right. I got right. another no. Cool, no problem. But I know you you told me this, and I believe that you said this. So I know there's a yes somewhere. Right. And then you somebody's got to gotta obey. Have that somebody. conversation with God. Say, where's my yes? Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, with that, it's making me think of the uh the parable of the persistent widow. And for those of you who want to look it up, Luke 18, 1 through 8, and how jesus was talking and he was saying how there was this persistent widow that kept going to the king and asking and asking and asking and he was like no mm -hmm. no 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 and she kept coming and coming and coming and he was like you know what let me just give her what she's asking for so she could leave, leave me alone, me alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's yeah. the persistence and even when you were talking about the lgbtq community it was they were persistent like you said and so they finally got their yes and we as believers certain petitions if we're talking in that vein of political uh spectrum mm -hmm. that those bills that are being passed that we're not paying attention to those laws that are slowly coming up we need to be persistent with our petitions we need to be persistent with our you know our viewpoints and to be vocal with it just as much without the fear or the dread of backlash that's the thing there's people who are persistent their their forefront and their forethought is not oh my gosh what if this happens to me in the process it's like no get give me my stuff uh -huh. mm -hmm. if somebody's hounding you and you owe some money if you owe money to a creditor they are going to hound you until they get their stuff it's a yep. principle it's a principle of being persistent, being relentless, and we have to do the same thing. And like Denny, you were saying, how sometimes we get knocked down and we get discouraged. Mm -hmm. And it's like, then we start to question and we start to take, the Bible says, take no thought saying, but we take those thoughts and we start saying, well, maybe we say, I'm off, yep. or maybe I shouldn't have done this, or maybe this, or maybe that. And you start doubting and God's like, no, I told you to go. The kingdom of uh, heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. I'm telling mm -hmm. you to take it. If I'm telling you as your father to take it and you're like, well, but they said no. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. They, go after it. Even with, uh, it's coming to my now, Joseph, his family threw him away, but he knew he had a dream. He didn't understand it, but he knew he had a dream. So he mm. was persistent through being sold into slavery. He was persistent with Potiphar. He was persistent in the jail cell. He was still persistent even when they were like, I got you, when I get to the palace, I got you, I got you, I'm gonna remember you. Mm -hmm. They didn't remember him, but he was still persistent right. because he was like, no, there is something about this thing that I have to get to the end result. 
end result being him second in command, saving Israel, saving the people. But he was persistent. He was relentless. Yes. And it's like time out for the patty cake type of Christians. I'm sorry to say that like that. But we have to boldly seize the promises that God has given us. We have to advance the kingdom with unwavering determination. That relentless has to kick in and burn like a fire because anything right. else, and for even parents, we got kids who will not stop asking for something. There's something my son is asking for right now. And I'm like, no. Amen. No. Go ahead. All of mine. <laughs> and no, no, not right now. Not right now. No, 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 no. And then you get like, okay, look. And you're finally like start to consider, like, hmm, maybe I should just 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 go ahead, take it. Bye. Mm -hmm. But that's that relentlessness. <laughs> that happened to me today. Let me tell you this funny story. Right? <laughs> I got a 13 year old, right? A couple weeks ago, I posted it on Facebook and I coached him into getting his first girl's phone number, right? And he don't got no cell phone. Now he got the girl's number. And I told him, I said, all right, I got an old cell phone. I'll put a text app on there. You can text the girl. Well, it wasn't working. When I tell you every second this boy gets, is the phone working? Did you figure it out? Can I get the phone? Yesterday, I walk in the house. He's in the swimming pool. I walk in the house from driving, my, dropping my car off at the shop. You know, did you get the phone work? I said, boy, I'm just getting in the house. I'm like so annoyed. But, yeah. but you know what? You know what I did today? I worked on that phone. So that boy would hey. leave me alone. <laughs> You're not going to deny him that phone. Right. He refused to right. be denied. Right. Look, right. You gave, right. man, man, no, right. look, this, this, that's so good because you yeah. gave him a promise. Mm -hmm. You gave him a promise. And as his father, he mm -hmm. trusted that promise. And that's so he going to hold that's you. That's good. Now, now, right? A kingdom. And God is a king. And we have to take the mentality that our father is a king. So when yeah, you know yeah. that if your daddy owns a business, when you show up to that business, you move around that business different. You do. You go to this you McDonald's do. over here and you're docile. You go to the McDonald's your daddy owned. Own, Oh, you walk up in there. You want some fries? I want a oh, McFlurry. Yeah. I want an orange right. shake. <laughs> you know, like you you Somebody better make it for me because this is my dad. Yeah. That's the mentality that we have to do and use yeah. and be in the kingdom. When God yeah. says, Denzi, this is what I have for you. Denny, this is what I have for you. Percy, this is what I have for you. Minister Ian, this is what I have for you. Apostle right. Hoff, this is what I have for you. We got to take that and say, oh, is that so? Okay, right. cool. Show me where right. it is. Show me right. how to do it. And let's and, and bring me the yeah. people, bring me the resources, and let's get it done mm -hmm. and move on that because God is a king. And then we right. know that he says that his word won't return to him void. Mm -hmm. Right. So what I'm not trying to do is as my blessings, I want all my blessings. Oh, I don't right. want to have to pass my blessings down to my kids. Yeah. And they get to endure. I don't want to be Moses to get to right. look and see the promised land, but never experience it. <laughs> oh, that was oof. Ooh, you get to see it. Oh <laughs> yeah, and yeah. But you not go over there, right? I don't. I want. I want everything that's for me. Everything. Mm -hmm. And everything, I want to take everything. it. And I'm. I'm trying to get myself to the to, to the space where. And that's why I'm like, thank God for this 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 season of training camp and what it is instilling in us. Yeah. It is the 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 stick to itiveness that we need. The 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 how to lati frame it. The uh. What did you call them? The baby Christians, the 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 soft patty cake, the patty, patty, cake. patty cake Christians. Stop being patty cake, right? And, and, give me and a trouble. That we are engaged in a war. Yes. Yeah. And that we have a general that's given us instructions, but the general yes. is our father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we should move different. Mm -hmm. We should be out moving with our chest out, not boastful or prideful or arrogant. Yeah. But we should be moving like this is this is my all this is the, the bible says the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof all this belong to my daddy daddy yeah. which part of it uh do i get to steward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we move forward based on what he our steward. right yep. and if we get ourselves to that space the doors okay. that god is opening the 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 things that he's unfolding the, the the mysteries that he's revealing like we got to get ourselves to that space and stop discounting ourselves like them 10 spies right. and a lot of times as believers we discount ourselves like them 10 spies because we don't understand who we are we are grasshoppers in they sight 
I'm I'm just poor. How am I going? I'm from the ghetto. How am I going to do? God didn't ask you to qualify yourself. Nope. That's right. He didn't ask none of us to qualify ourselves for his assignment. He just said, this is what I got for you. Believe in me. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's the yep. only qualification we need is our faith. God, yep. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you said you're going to do it, so you're going to do it. You're going to do it. What do yeah. I need to do? Yep. That I boy think, uh, said, he in the pool, he in the pool, and he says, that hey, hey, daddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 You know, Can I get in the house first? Can I get two feet in the front door? No, no, right. no. I don't care about the two feet in the front door. You right. told me you was going to get the phone working. I need the phone right. working. I got things right. to do. Right. 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 But then also the mentality too, that we need to take into this kingdom, into our assignments with God. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, too, not to cut you off, sorry, um, but there's like we see in today's society, there's a sense of entitlement. You ain't do nothing but you're entitled to everything you're entitled to this you're entitled to that because they think so and so paved the way well in that same instance we are entitled so we have to walk around our father gave us a promise so we're entitled to that promise so you need to move out my way give me what belongs to me because i'm entitled so that same mindset just turning it for the kingdom yep. of no my daddy gave me this promise uh -huh. my dad my great big daddy god gave me this promise so i'm mm -hmm. entitled to this i'm in so you need to move whoever needs to move needs to move whoever needs to show me favor needs to show me favor because i'm entitled to this yep. so because i'm entitled to this i refuse to be denied you could say you could say no okay you said no you gotta move you said no okay no you you looking at me sideways okay you're not it you need to move but i'm entitled uh -huh. so that same mindset but for the kingdom to keep mm -hmm. going and like who are you to tell me no because i'm entitled that's right man that's that's huge I, the the interesting thing is our faith is working either way you cut the, either way you slice the pie the faith is working whether be, you believe you can or you believe right. you can't you're right so and we just got a shift from believing that we can't so we to can. knowing that we can right absolutely because of who our daddy is you brought up uh, Joseph and him interpreting the dreams. I promised right before you said that I typed Joseph in my phone because I wanted oh, wow. to the same exact thing, right? Wow. And and I love the fact that all the trials and tribulations he went through. Like he was an, initially, you know, his dad gave him his his, co his coat, right? And he was like mm -hmm. the favorite son, and he knew that he was going to do great things. Brothers jealous of him, left him in the pit, sold him into slavery, in prison, right? But regardless of where he was he still held on to that promise that his daddy yes. gave him yes. he still held on to that position that his daddy gave him yes. and even when he was at his lowest point in prison he still operated in his gifts yes a lot of times we feel like because we're oh I, i'm i'm not an ordained pastor i don't have the microphone i've never taught bible study i can't operate in my gifts i'm not a I'm not a leader at my job. I'm not the boss. I'm not the, I can't, I, no, you right. operate in your gifts where you are. Absolutely. Because if you can operate your gifts in where you are, now you're ready for elevation. But if you can't operate that gift at this level, how can I trust you at this level? Good. So right. we have to be able to be persistent even at the level that we're at. And how many, think about it, he's in prison. How many people, I, I've been to prison. Then you've been shot. The tea, I don't know what you've been through, but you done been through something. We ain't going to talk about it here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody done been through something. You done been to prison? <laughs> we can't let that hold us back for what God I don't look like what us. I've been through. Praise him. Right. We don't look like what we've been through. We right. can't let that hold us back from what we've been through. Well, what, what, what we're supposed we can't let what we've been through hold us back from where we're supposed to be going. Mm -hmm. Being in prison, now you're second in command, helping to make sure that people don't go through a, a famine. And you have the the bright God gave you the vision, the dream of how to store up things. So now that you're everyone's going through famine, but you're going through prosperity, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're operating what God told you to operate in. Come on, we got to get in line to what God has told us to yes. do, and not worry about what the outside sources look like. We can't look at what our education or what we've been through in right, our past right. looks like. We got to operate in what God told us to operate in. So if God gave you a business and you only got one client, treat that one client like he's a billionaire. That's good. Mm -hmm. Treat that client like good. he's a billionaire. Don't don't yep. be the okay. I don't care. Six 
600 people denied you and you got one client treat that client like you got millions of clients and and right. give them the best service that you got and watch right. god bless that right so we so we we want we want we want we, we get a prophetic word and we want to see everything happen like this right like we want to see the, yep. the huge mm -hmm. thing happen like that we don't want to mm -hmm. go through the process that it takes to get there we might get some no's we might get some doors shut in our face but god is still working that thing out for us we have mm -hmm. to like Dennis said we have to know who we are and whose we are right right we got to know we are children of the king and the king will not let us down the king and, and this king Good. is the creator of all like you said the earth right. of the lord and the fullness thereof he is the king of kings so we are the yep. sons and daughters of the king of kings we can't mm -hmm. be denied the only person that good. can deny us is us that's good yep. the king won't let us down that is good 100 percent, 100 percent. it's last night I, I was and 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 watching our mouth is crucial so i've learned um uh, and i learned this from apostle years ago and i've just been able to implement it but i've learned to be um to be quiet when i don't have the right thing to say versus just saying something to say something I, I'm, right. I'm quiet i'm gonna be quiet and then i'm i'm consulting the lord and so last night i was um i was in that space right um uh, i was in that space last night and i'll jump to this and then i'll jump back to that to, to piggyback on what Benzie was saying. Um, I was sitting at the table about 6.30ish, and I was like, all right, I wanna go, you know, do a little bit brushing up, studying, maybe I'll play some worship music, maybe I'll get into some prayer, like, I don't know. And and the, this thought dropped, right? And the, the Holy Spirit says, we have to stop thinking what God says is enough, isn't enough because we don't understand him or his process. That's good. So we work our ways out of, right? Imagine, Noah didn't have any concept of rain, right. and his instruction is to build an ark. <laughs> but what? Moses is, is walking. <laughs> God, you brought us out here. I don't see no way for all I see in front of us is water, right. and we already know what's up with this water. Like, what? What? You could have just let us get killed back in, in Egypt, stay slaves, and you could have just <laughs> left know. us. Like, what's you gonna bring us out here? Like, this how right. you gonna do us? But he just kept. <laughs> Walking. he kept, walking, kept walking, right and so last night i was i was having a conversation with the lord i was thinking something and i was like i don't need to be thinking that and so i said god i need your assistance because because th these thoughts are off i need your assistance you tell me what to do how to do it you show me how to walk this thing out right i gotta get these thoughts together and 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 today um about 10 45 prophetess kathy texts me right there's a group text she texts the group but then she texts me head up i you know i talk to prophet kathy when i see her at church that's you know most of the extent of our conversation um but she texts me and and you know she said i wanted to share with you as i was praying for the prophetic community i heard for you today stamina to stand in the midst of adversity but god has a greater work for you indeed to bring the wealth of the wicked to be a blessing to those he's sending your way so be encouraged today she had no idea the conversation i was having with the lord the night before That's good. and what i was going back and forth but her just being obedient right and me trying to walk out what i believe god showed me to walk out being relentless and refusing to be denied refusing to accept right because we went back to that definition of 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 denied is, is refusing to admit or acknowledge something i'm refusing to admit what the devil was trying to show me it's good god has shown me a picture and i'm refusing the, the, the devil will pop up with other pictures i'm refusing to even acknowledge that bro if you don't get up out of here with this right and, and in the midst of that he sends one of his messengers with a word of encouragement that I heard you what you were saying last night. He could have talked to me, cool, but I love it when, okay, you talk to somebody else about me that I know they don't even have a clue or an idea of what's going on of this conversation right. we're having right now. But you right. send somebody else to, to 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 be that pat on the back, to be that push, to keep on going. Keep no no no, right. keep on going. You're doing what God said to do. Keep on going, and Amen. don't worry about the adversity that's around. And I think as believers, we often lose sight because of the adversity it's like when when um when the disciple jumped out the boat right 
he was literally doing exactly what he saw Jesus doing without thought. But then when he started to pay attention to the adversity, that's when, yep. Then that's when everything that he was walking in as a result of following Christ mm -hmm. got shaky. Yeah. And they just had to come save him. Right. right. And I yeah, think right. far too often us as believers, like we want Christ to come save us constantly. He, he did it right. once on the cross. Boom. That was it and done. Now it's time for us to put our, our, our war gear on and go get to it. And go to it. Yep. Stop accepting the picture that the enemy tries to put up. Stop accepting all of the um, you can't do this because. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I share yeah. with somebody um, one of my thought processes now is every time he tells me I can't do something. I dang near want to high five him because I'm like, that's encouragement that I can. You know I can. Now, now right. I know that you know I can do it because you right. won't tell me I can't. Right. right, right, right. And that's what we have to do as believers is understand the revelation that God's given us in whatever fashion, whatever form that he's given us these revelations in and implement them so that we can have success Yeah, and we can have, we can take possession of what he's given us to take possession of. Yeah without wavering and without the questioning and the thing is going to your point of um like just ignoring the opposition the friends of the paralytic man they ignore the opposition jesus was in there they knew jesus was in there there was a bunch of people they had to carry their friend through all of that then it was like okay there's no room here what should we do okay let's tear up the roof who initially thinks to tear up somebody else's roof <laughs> right you know what i mean like right. no no we're gonna tear up this roof he's gonna get his healing yeah, you know, I, don't, I don't know you know i don't know if they knew the person of the house that you know they tore up or what didn't matter we're gonna tear the roof off this mother we're gonna tear the roof off regardless our boy needs something right and so uh, it's it's like they did not care they did not care they're like okay and they carried him up we don't know if he was heavy not heavy but the fact that they're carrying him through all of that all of that opposition and then was like okay hold on one second okay uh we're gonna tear this roof up and then we're gonna lower you down and then everybody inside is like what is what and jesus was like because of your faith because of your faith you push past the opposition. So how many situations do we go through where we need to tear off roofs mm. so that we can hear Jesus say, because of your faith, all that those situations, like even entry. the woman with the issue, what'd you say? I said, that sounds like a forceful entry, forceful <laughs> entry, tear, tear off roof. a roof, mm -hmm. tear it off, push past the people. So Jesus, could say, because of your faith, I gave you a promise. You kept pushing towards it pushing past all of those things like paul said i press towards the mark mm -hmm. you have to push press, it's forceful yeah. entry it's not easy the enemy is not it's a war war he's using war strategies war tactics and he's not just gonna be like oh you want the promise oh, okay here you go he's not gonna do that so we have to push we have to fight we have to tear off some roofs we got to move some people out the way, whatever it is for that forceful entry. Absolutely. I, th I think um, the great thing about what all, all three of us are saying here, right, is that this is not something new. God right. has given us examples in his word of how here's a promise, here's a task, and here's there's going to be op opposition. And so when we are faced with these things, Number one, he sent us the paraclete, he sent us the Holy Spirit to say, mm -hmm. you're not alone in dealing with this, you have a helper, because he knew opposition was gonna come. So number one, we have a helper, we're not in this alone, even if you feel alone, he's right there with you. Number mm -hmm. two, when you're feeling discouraged, because we're, we're all, we're human, right? When we're feeling discouraged, so we're not telling you you're not gonna feel discouraged, you're not gonna feel down, sad, right. whatever the case may be. But what we're saying is, there's so many examples in the word of God that you need to just, if you're going through a task and you're pushing for something, you know you're pushing through it, or you're getting a whole bunch of no's, go get the word. Go print out some scriptures. Go read the same scriptures every single, go read the story of the issue of the blood, uh, one with the issue of blood. Read the story about how they ripped the roof off and lowered the man down. Read the stories of the walls of Jericho and how, hey, Kenny, he coming in. He said he refused to be denied, Jenny. Look at him. <laughs> 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 yep, refused to be denied. But we gotta be in our word. 
We have to be, we, I mean, we say all this stuff, but it's because we've been in our word and we know the word of God. And when you're, when you're struggling in these things, you got to mm -hmm. get to the word because yeah. the word that, that's going to be your foundation to help you keep going, keep pushing, keep moving yeah. forward and refusing for that denial to stop you. So we got to stay in our word. We got to yes. remember the promises that God has given us. And we got to know that God is God and he's going to remain God through all your trials and tribulations. Amen. That's that's so dope because I was thinking as you was talking and I thought about this earlier um, and forgot to bring it up. But in just what you were saying, I thought of for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every vain imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Right. And I start thinking of the weapons. We, we've been talking about warfare and refusing to be the I start thinking about the weapons. And I'm like, when we when we run into them nose, we have the weapon of praise. We have the weapon of prayer, worship. Like we can we can implement these weapons. We get our no. Cool. You said no, no problem. Father, I thank you. Even though they say no, maybe that's not the person that you have to be a blessing in my life, to move this thing that you've given me forward. But I thank you that you would show me the right door to walk through. Right. Then you start praising and worshiping him in that. And and and, and I thought I said, man, it's so dope. That, that that these weapons that God has given us that we can use them once we we learn how to use them we can use them constantly yeah right this is this is uh, forgive me I tell, I tell everybody all the time God talks to me in sports or in street vernacular is how he gives me revelation <laughs> but these weapons this is this is a this is a uh I'm trying to think of the politically correct way to say it, but I, you know, I'm from the hood, so we just this is the chopper with the extended mag that don't end. <laughs> this magazine doesn't have a it, it's unlimited. You right. can just keep shooting this gun off, right. right? Every time the enemy, the Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, and just go on. God, I thank you. I worship you. Put some worship music on, and just and, and whatever the situation, whatever the circumstances, when you find yourself, uh, the Bible says, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Right. So when you find yourself, man, I feel discouraged. Like, man, it ain't. Ah, oh, it's just not work. Nope. Put some music on, right? Before you get the expressing and declaring out of your mouth and authorizing your future right. to start forming because you say it ain't working. No, 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 no. I'm gonna shut my mouth. I'm, Father, I thank you that it's working. I'm gonna put on a song that might have the words, it's working, it's work, whatever it is. I'm put that song on and I'm gonna sing that song. It's work. I might play that song 200 times in a row. But until I get myself back in the space of my mind is back focused and locked in on what the Lord has told me, showed me, or what I know I'm supposed to be doing, then I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna praise, I'm gonna worship. I'm gonna, I'm a, like Benzie say, I'm gonna get scripture, right? Because God says that he holds himself accountable to his word. Yeah. And as believers, what we often do is we want God to hold himself accountable to our emotions. Mm -hmm. That's good. And our emotions mm -hmm. are so fickle because in a day's time, we didn't went from happy to sad, to excited, to afraid, right. to be like, if, if God held oh, yeah. himself to our emotions, he'll look schizophrenic. Yeah, he'll be all over the place. He'll be bouncing all over the place. <laughs> But he holds himself to his word. That's yeah. it. So when you yeah. line up what you got going on with his word, then you start to see results manifest in your life. And that's what yeah. we have to get ourselves to the place of refusing to be denied. Yeah. yeah, you might deny me based on what I said, but God said. Right. And it ain't nothing else that can come after God said. Right. It's mm -hmm. like if you have a conversation with your friend and you telling them whatever advice you want to tell them. And then they say, well, God said for me, that's the end of the conversation. I don't have no more advice to tell you. <laughs> I ain't touching yep. you. You already got an instruction. So go right. to your got it. Already right. got it. And that's how we have to be as believers. Jesus, it's 830 already. Come on. We <laughs> oh, wow. We have to talk to Apostle about extended Bible study. for <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Do you guys have any, any last nuggets that y'all want to drop um, before we get the opportunity to worship the Lord with, with our giving? Any last, um, any any nugget that you just want to? I don't have a nugget. I just feel like while I was just reading the comments that someone, I don't know, someone who's watching yeah. is, is struggling right now. Yeah. Somebody is struggling and they're, hold, they're letting the enemy talk to them in their ear. Yeah. And I would just piggyback off of Denny. You have to silence the voice of the yes. enemy. And you have to listen to the word of the Lord. You have to hear the Lord. If you can't hear him, you praise him. You make sure he hears you. You get on your face and you pray 
you turn on your worship music, you put on mm -hmm. some, you remember this church, put on some Dr. Hodge, put on whoever you like to listen to, and mm -hmm. let that voice be the voice mm -hmm. that you hear. Because right mm -hmm. now the enemy is talking to you and you're hearing it. Yes. It's disrupting your sleep. Oh, I feel it. It's disrupting your sleep. You can't even sleep at night. You're stressed out. Um, you just feel you feel like anxiety is hitting you. I don't know who it is. I just feel this through the comments. I don't know who it is. It's somebody that's watching it. Maybe they're going to watch it on the replay. I don't know who it is. But listen, God had gave you that promise. And what is for you is for you. Do not let the enemy hinder you to where you miss that promise. And that promise dies and goes to the grave. It is important for you to walk out that promise. Yes. So get back in your yes. word. Go to church. If you ain't been to church, go to church. Go to Bible study. Whatever you got to do. Whatever works for you in your schedule. Get hungry. Mm -hmm. Get hungry for the Lord. Because you got to hear him. You have to hear him and shut the voice of the enemy. But that's all I got. Mm -hmm. I don't have nothing else. But I just felt that so strong in my spirit. That's let's, so let's, let's, let's pray for that person yeah. or those people because it might be father we yeah, thank yeah. you and praise you that uh whoever you identify with that whatever person is on the other end of their computer screen that that is raising their hand saying that that's me father we thank you for giving them a plan of action we thank you for surrounding them with believers that will speak and encourage them according to your word and your instruction we thank you for the strength to 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 tell the enemy no we thank you that the enemy's voice is being quieted in their lives yeah. in jesus name and we thank you that your voice is is is, is astounding and astounding in their ears it is ringing in their ears father that they are able to hear you be obedient to what you say father we thank you for just surrounding them with believers words of encouragement um uh, everything that you know that they need so that they can take that step of faith towards you father your word says that if we draw closer to you that you would draw closer to us so we thank you for that person or those people that they are taking that step of faith, whatever it may be, however it may look, to step closer to you, to open and give you more access so that the assignment that you have placed in them uh, doesn't get passed down or doesn't bypass them um, out of fear, out of disobedience or whatever might be going on. God, we thank you for in, uh, encouraging them. We thank you for strengthening them now in Jesus' name. And we just pray. Hi, Yasaka, that big. Thank you, Father, for wrapping your arms around them, letting them know that you were there in the midst of whatever is going on with them, that you did not leave them, you did not forsake them, nor will you ever do so. And God, we uh, await somebody to testify about what you do in this regard, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Live and praise, we have the, the opportunity. Um, I, I, I heard... E.T., the hip-hop preacher, say this, and it, it stuck with me. We don't got to, we get to. So we don't got to give. We get to give. God has blessed us and opened doors and provided jobs for us and put us in places of uh, authority, put us in places of provision, um, that we get the opportunity to give, that we have the means to give, right? And if, if even if you're on the level that you want to give on, give where you are right allow the holy spirit to, to 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 press on you and be cheerful in it that's one thing i had to learn because for a season i would give and i would be like dang i gotta do this until i understood that the bible says that he loves a cheerful giver mm -hmm. so i start trying to change my mind frame with giving god i get to like you don't need this ten dollars i got this twenty dollars i got this dollar i got you don't need it but you have opened up a door for me to be able to do so. So this $10, it might be my last 10. It might be my last $2, whatever it might be. But you press it upon me to, to sow into it. And I'm a living witness that there were times that I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. And there were times that I said, I want to be able to give that. Yeah. I want to be able to give a thousand. And I, and, and I was in position at times to sow a thousand, more than a thousand. Uh, there, were, there, were, there were times where I'm like, God, I wish I could just give five dollars. I just don't have it right now. Mm -hmm. And somebody would walk up to me and slide me a, a ten dollar bill. And for me, it was like, oh, that's test time. Do I put yep. this ten? Right, right, right. You right. <laughs> You're like, oh Lord. And do I just be obedient to what I just told the Lord? If I, if I, right. if I could give five dollars, right. I give it. And right. I was able to fight through and, and get a five dollars. And then other things start happening. Right. So we get the opportunity to um, hopefully they'll put on the screen. We have tons of um, 
ways that we can partner with God and so right you can go there to uh, lpccglobal.org backslash give we can text lpcc to uh 888-364-4483 you guys see all the ways on the screen I just like to read them to encourage myself um <laughs> like I told y'all last week I just got to set up where where it just comes out I don't you know there are other times where the Lord is say you know say brother kick this down and I'm like okay God it just come out my account no nope. but then I have to remind myself I get the opp- I have the opportunity yeah. to partner with God in this fashion I have the opportunity to put my money to work and invest it right we, we, we we're, we're gung-ho nowadays on investments and the kingdom of God in my opinion is the best investment um, okay. because you never know how God is going to communicate what you sow you never know and it ain't about you know him uh shower and money off the tree you don't know that your seed could open up a door for you know your kids you don't know there's a testimony here in my house um for those of you know that I'm, I'm married now and my wife has had uh, we have it ain't just her we had um an adult daughter in college and wife just tells me hey the semester at school is paid for and we looking at each other like where did how did it get paid it don't matter the lord did it hey it's right. paid for. Right. We ain't got to figure out how to put this money together to pay for it. It's paid for. Thank God. And then we yep. just keep on, right? And we we keep on sowing and we keep on giving and we keep on believing, um, because we know God wants to do amazing things in our lives. So that's just you know just a small testimony. And I don't even want to say small in the form of, you know, insignificant. It, it's it's right. it's. I don't forgive me, Father. I don't I don't mean to say small. Thank you for opening that door. Thank you for. Um, however he paid for it we don't know how he paid for it we was trying to scratch our heads together and figure out how to do it and then we got word that it was already done yeah so thank you um and those are just small things i believe that our seeds go in, into the ground um and do right literally as a farmer when you plant that that apple seed in the ground you don't know how many apples is going to pop up on that tree you don't know how many good apples how many bad apples how many green apples. you don't know but you plant it knowing that at the end of the day this this thing is going to yield some apples and then in a certain amount of time i'm gonna be able to come pluck apples off of this tree and enjoy right. and so i think we just have to take that mindset as um as believers we take that mindset knowing that you know we get the opportunity to sow in his kingdom um and allow him you know grant him access even further into right. the affinity of our life um Let's pray, man. I love just having these conversations. Like I always say, we can have these things all oh, night long. Uh, Father, we thank you for our ability to sow into your kingdom. Um, if there were any amongst us that didn't have the means to sow, we thank you for granting us the means. You know that whatever it is that we need, you know that we need it. Um, so we thank you for opening those doors. Thank you for providing jobs. Thank you for providing um, opportunities to invest, the right investments. Um, and we thank you for whatever financial means, whatever doors you decide to open. We thank you for them because we know that if you want to open those doors, benefit um, that those doors are being open. So we thank you for the ability to sow into your kingdom, the partner with spreading the gospel um, of Jesus Christ. Allow someone to uh, engage you the way we get to engage you. Allow someone and afford someone to have the relationship with you that we get to have with you we don't want to be stingy in it so we thank you for um you know doing everything that you decide to do in our lives thank you for all the doors that you've opened even thank you for the doors that you decided to close knowing that it was something better down the road for us and god we just thank you for the ability to sow into your kingdom and partner with you that you would see value in allowing us to do so in jesus name amen 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 um, I, I think we did our job tonight um yeah Trying to see, is there anything Pastor else? Pastor Linda we said we did good. I saw Pastor Linda. She said, "Oh, you saw it." I oh, she was already saying, "Okay, we oh, okay, we, okay. Okay. we did a good job. We did a good job." Yeah, yeah. I wasn't trying to get no whooping. Yeah, We're right, we not gonna get in trouble. Don't mess it up. Need no belt. Look at Grace. Thank you guys for joining <laughs> yes, us tonight. Thank, thank you to my brother and my sister Benzie and and Lati. It's almost like cliche. I would. I was about to say Benzie, Mimi, and but I'm like, you know, Mimi's. <laughs> doing our thing but thank you right. living praise thank you for tuning in with us tonight um our prayer is that something was said in this conversation that pricked your heart that, that got your attention that, that um that resonated with you that you could implement in your life 
and and open up another door, another access point for the Lord to come in um, and just continue to chip away and build who he's designed you to be, each one of us. And, I, and I, I'm so grateful for my church family. I don't know where I would be without my church family. Um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to serve in his kingdom, to partner with him, um, and for all the people that he's allowed me to meet as a result of being in his kingdom, right? I'm, 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 I'm super grateful, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to, um, you know, to share what was on our hearts with the people, and hopefully it bless somebody. Yeah. Um, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anybody want to pray us out? All right. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this time. We thank you, Lord God, that your anointing arrest, rest upon us to do absolutely everything that you've called us to do. So, Father, we thank you because we know that you are a promise keeper, that we will not quit on you, but we will see the promise. So for those, Lord God, who are feeling down, Lord God, who need a second wind. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you thank infuse you. them with the second wind that they need to keep going. But Father, we thank you that as members of Living Praise, we operate from a standpoint of victory and that we refuse to be denied. We thank you that everyone is covered by the blood of the Lamb. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No backlash, no tickets, no accidents, no mishaps. No malfunctions in the name of Jesus. But Father, we thank you that as we come together again, Lord God, as a body of believers, as an apostolic house, we thank you that we're able to move mountains and shake demonic resources out of their illegal places. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 All right, LPC. Night, live and pray. Bye. <laughs>